Hello, kia ora, g'day. I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your Australia weather forecast for the next week ahead. Just a quick programming note, we don't have a weather video update tomorrow Wednesday. We'll be back again on Thursday. For the next few weeks, we'll be doing uh, four days a week instead of five. That's because we've got a few uh, holidays coming up here in New Zealand. Let me make sense of what is going on at the moment. We've still got the leftovers of the tropical cyclone producing thunderstorms and rain around uh, the coastline of Queensland, but also pushing inland as well. Not a lot of thunderstorms at the moment, but that might change a wee bit as we go through the day and the heat sort of comes into the mix a wee bit more. Mostly dry in New South Wales, a couple of showers around, but most Mostly dry, same in the ACT, and unfortunately for Victoria, uh, a mostly dry and sometimes windy week ahead. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, the other area of uh, energy, a few thunderstorms around the top end, kind of usual stuff, although it's pretty quiet, I think, at the moment for the top. You know, we're not really seeing widespread monsoon rains, but we are seeing a fair bit of, uh, amount of thunderstorms through the Kimberley and through inland parts of Western Australia, also a few morning thunderstorms uh, on the southern coastline today. And that colder change or that, that uh, front moving along the South Australia coastline with a few showers coming in around Sejuna this morning. Here is the air pressure map. So you can see those thunderstorms Western Australia caused by that area of low pressure in the south. Uh, but the purple you see all over Australia is lower air pressure. So that's favorable you know, to having lighter winds for most places and it produces the showers and the instability in the tropical regions. But down here in the Victoria area and around Tasmania and South Australia, that high is dredging up a southerly. Now, high pressure affects the southern coastline, uh, so that's where you've got the highest risk of showers. But to be honest with you, mostly dry over the days ahead. And between all that low pressure over the continent and the high pressure to the south, we're going to see a squash zone between that air pressure. So that means windy weather coming through for some places. Here is how Wednesday is shaping up. So we'll start with the wind. All that low pressure around the top part of Australia, or really the, the top two thirds of Australia, sinking right down here into New South Wales. Now as it does that, high pressure that's further to the south of the country is squeezing up that air pressure. So the isobars, the white lines get squashed together. When you see that, that means the wind is stronger. Someone asked the other day, why don't you show wind maps? Well, once you get used to understanding what isobars look like, you know, when you see them squashed together, that's windy weather. And so gusty conditions through the mountains around the ACT and coming out into Victoria, we're not talking about severe gales, but gusts may get up to gale force here and there, which is not great dry, windy weather. Got a few thunderstorms into New South Wales, a um, couple of showers maybe around Victoria and Tasmania. But most of the energy is up here in Queensland. That's where we're seeing widespread thunderstorms and downpours of rain and potentially some areas getting you know, 60, 70 millimetres in just a day. By Thursday, we've still got the wind around. In fact, uh, Thursday is a particularly gusty day around Victoria and South Australia. It is a southeasterly wind for the most part. Um, again, gusts might get up to gale force into the afternoon, but it's really just more of a, a bit of a gusty, blustery day in exposed places. We're not talking about da damaging winds, but blustery winds. So if you've got fires and you've got mostly dry weather around, not a good forecast. The only positive here, we do have some showers, but the pale blue, right at the bottom of the scale. So we're not talking about a lot of wet weather. Uh, rain is more likely on the eastern, southeastern sides, brushing the ACT and up here around parts of New South Wales. Heavier rain up around parts of Queensland, 200 millimetres forecast in some central areas, although that is not widespread for the most part. Uh, rainfall is, is not actually too big in a number of areas, but a, a fair amount of thunderstorms and downpours around Queensland, whereas it's pretty quiet in the Northern Territory and much quieter around Western Australia on Thursday. That easterly wind though, pushing out to the coastline. Let's have a look at some thunderstorms. Here we are on a Thursday afternoon, two o'clock Eastern time, severe thunderstorms uh, around Eastern parts of Victoria, the ACT, New South Wales, severe thunderstorms, large hail, chance of flash flooding in localized areas, and uh, not quite so much the uh, severe risk in the Queensland area, although the far north of Queensland certainly has them. They're a little more isolated, uh, those sorts of ones. But yeah, seeing this energy in the southeast, maybe a bit of good news if you can get one of those you know, rain events to fall where it's dry, but you don't want the lightning with it as well. That can start fires. So a few moving parts, that is for sure. On Friday, we've got a couple of low pressure zones up here around the Coral Sea, kind of Vanuatu area. Both of these lows are worth monitoring, but the one in Queensland producing more heavy rain, some areas getting 150 millimetres 
in just a day. So we are seeing a lot more of that monsoon rain around Queensland. Into New South Wales, low pressure near the Queensland border means, again, that squash zone with the isobars, the white lines, all squeezing together. That is a sign of strong wind. Uh, so gusty conditions on Friday, especially around the mountains, the Victorian Alps, around uh, the Great Dividing Range, around the ACT. Heaviest rain uh, coming into the southeast corner here, maybe 60, 70 millimetres for some of you in just a day. Most places, though, don't have that kind of rainfall. You're sort of down around 5, 10 millimetres. The other feature, sorry Northern Territory if I'm not talking about you much, but there isn't really a lot going on. Just a few showers, just like we see here in the Kimberley. Got a few showers through Western Australia, but the heat pushing down past Bunbury by the time we get to Friday into the afternoon. And South Australia, kind of in between it all, southeasterly winds, just a couple of coastal showers. It won't be very much, although sometimes you can get a thunderstorm, you know, out of that kind of setup. Going into Saturday, still monitoring the two tropical lows off to the northeast. But really the main feature here, southeast corner of Australia, because you've got this windy easterly coming off the Tasman Sea, not overly hot, if you're on the coastline, temperatures won't be especially hot. Uh, inland areas may be quite warm though, because even though the, the red boundary line is north of you, the gusty winds over the Great Dividing Range can lift up those temperatures further. A few showers and thunderstorms, fingers crossed we get some rain falling into Victoria. It's not a huge amount, but you never know, you might just get a few uh, bits of relief around there. High pressure just south of Tassie, that is why it's windy in that southeasterly corner, and there could be some gusts around gale force. Not very windy for the tropical area, but the heat moves along, sort of you find a southerly breeze coming in for Bunbury and for Fremantle, Perth, those areas. Temperatures drop a wee bit, but the heat pushes down now around Esperance. By Sunday, the heat pushing further along, coming into South Australia, Big picture here, but sort of show you, you know, where the storms are. And so we've obviously got this big storm southwest of Australia, all that polar air, not too far away from Western Australia, but it's far enough away for it to not really cause too many issues. Uh, still got those winds blowing through around New South Wales, the ACT, Victoria, some parts of South Australia, gusty easterly blowing through that area. And now we've got this large low in the north, trying to sort of work out if it's one tropical cyclone or two weaker low pressure zones. So we're monitoring that area as well very closely. So once we get to Monday, that's exactly what is happening in the modeling today. It splits apart. Now yesterday it showed it as a tropical cyclone with just one kind of low pressure zone. That's still potentially a tropical cyclone just south of New Caledonia. This one may also form into one, but these are so close that when we update you again on Thursday, they might have merged back together into one low, or they might completely split off. So that's why we can't lock in really what's happening up here around the Coral Sea and moving down towards the Tasman. But we do have those easterly winds coming into southeast corner of Queensland, all the way down New South Wales. So basically, eastern parts of New South Wales won't be as hot. The airflow coming off the sea rather than coming from inland and over you. So uh, winds are changing direction. That also means the smoke um, that's been around Victoria, rather than blowing off towards New Zealand, now pushing over towards South Australia. Uh, I've had some people talking about that over the last day or so. So let's just take a look at the rainfall expected for the next seven days, kind of get an idea as to what is on the way. So Queensland, all those thunderstorms really start to add up. You know, some areas here seeing over 200 millimetres coming through. Around uh, New South Wales, some of these coastal areas could be seeing 100 millimetres or more if you get a severe thunderstorm over you. But look at this, jump just over from the ACT on the other side of the, of the ranges and completely dry once you come into uh, southern parts around Wagga Wagga and going into Victoria, much drier for you. Dry over the rest of Australia, just a few showers here. The Kimberley, the top end, seeing a few downpours and thunderstorms. But really, it's, it, it's the eastern side of Australia that is seeing the most amount of wet weather over the next seven days. That's all from me. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for all the comments. Love reading them all. Can't always reply to them all, but thanks very much for sending them in. No video tomorrow, but I will see you again on Thursday. Catch you then.